so here we are uh, this evening, uh, right in the middle of Lent, right in the thick of it, right? It's Friday. Uh, we've been abstaining from meat. Maybe we've been fasting a little bit and doing our own personal private penances. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about some really crazy stories about some of our penances that we've done uh, over the past, you know, I don't know, 30, 40 years and uh, just share some funny stories or some weird stories about penances that really didn't go as well as we expected. I am Father Christopher Plant. I'm the pastor of St. Bartholomew here in Katy, Texas. And I'm Christopher Meyer. I'm the pastoral year seminarian here at St. Bartholomew in Katy, Texas. And welcome to Conversing Clergy. Here I am at your door. Would you let me in? So good. You know, just now, you almost said, uh, I'm uh, Christopher Meyer, I'm the pastor, and then you said pastoral <laughs> year. So I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you, you kind of changed the yeah. direction you were heading there. Yeah, I didn't have a line, so I just decided to take your line, and then I realized that wasn't going to work. Well, that was, I was very impressed, very impressed. And um, tonight, as you know, our logo is coffee. Why is it coffee? Because coffee helps stir conversation and so we like to show off also the mugs that we that we drink our coffee from uh, so right now I, I am using a stormtrooper mug and then what do you have there this is the expressions of Darth Vader sleepy cheerful frustrated excited angry sad Un unless I'm mistaken they all look the same they do. So, so maybe um, if we can show that to the people there, and then when I do the post, I'll I'll zoom in on that, and you guys can can uh, enjoy looking at that and laughing or not laughing or maybe thinking, Father, why don't we get on with it? So we're gonna do that right now. All right. So I want to start off with you because we were sharing about uh, so, some really crazy sort of stories about penances. So, and you actually gave a reflection this morning at the mass about it. Uh, after after we we had communion, so what uh, what was that story? So today in my reflection uh, at mass, which I guess some of you heard, I had mentioned that one Lent I had been very motivated by some of the very pious older seminarians at St. Mary's Seminary, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna give up my bed for Lent, and I didn't give it a whole lot of thought. Um, I don't think I gave it any prayer. And I ended up making it a whole two hours um, without my bed for Lent. I remember just being miserable. I think I actually did manage to fall asleep, but I woke up in so much pain. Mm. And I just immediately got in my bed. And, uh, yeah, that was that was a lesson learned and how so you were, I am. So what would you do? You slept on the floor instead? Is that where you slept? Yeah, so... I guess with something like that, you don't want to be too obvious. So I was, oh. I would kind of take my pillow and then sleep in the floor next to my bed, which at that point I didn't have a rug in my room. Oh yeah. Most seminarians have rugs, but I didn't know that I should get a rug. So I didn't right. have one for that first year. Um, yeah, it was, it was tough And the, the, it's basically cement floor at the seminary. Right. Well, and, and speaking of the seminary, I have an interesting story about, uh, about penance at, at the seminary. Now, Right now, you guys at St. Mary's Seminary in Houston, Texas, have some pretty good food. And I remember when when we ate there back in the day, back in you know early to early to mid two thousands, um, the food was actually pretty bad. I'm just going to come out and say it. I'm sorry. I shouldn't complain about the food. I should be grateful uh, for the food that that God has has given to us, so that we could be sustained and given energy, etc. Having said that. The food was not flavorable. It didn't have good flavor. Let me just put it that way. It wasn't bad. It just, the flavor was bad, okay? So I remember something that was very common was that they would have some form of a starch, like a rice or a potato or a noodle or another kind of noodle, and then they would have some kind of meat, and it would be basically beef in, in various kinds of sauces. And so there was a name that we had for it. We called it X over Y. So some kind of X uh, meat or protein product over some kind of a Y starch, okay? And that was pretty much three out of five days. That's what we had. That's what we had. Um, but during Lent, during Lent, especially on Fridays, uh, what we had for lunch 
was grilled cheese sandwiches. And boy, could they make some grilled cheese sandwiches. I mean, the, the butter, it was soaking in. It was a crusty, crispy bread. The cheese would ooze out. And then they made this tomato soup that was just amazing. Christopher is probably he's, probably, he's, he's probably fasting right, right now. now. <laughs> he's probably fasting right now. And, and uh, I'm actually fasting today right now as well. So I'm going to go get some grilled cheese sandwich. Anyway, the point is that that was considered a penance. And I'm thinking, okay, actually, this isn't a penance because I am really enjoying one of the few things that the seminary can actually cook well. And so I was thinking, in the name of Jesus Christ and in memory of his passion, I'm going to enjoy this grilled cheese sandwich. Not much of a penance. The penance would have been some kind of X over Y. Which I want to be clear as someone who's currently a seminarian, I'm, I'm away from the St. Mary's Seminary this year, but the food is fantastic now. Oftentimes, I'll hear parishioners say, oh, I bet the food is so bad at the seminary. And I go, nope, it's amazing. It's really good. Yeah. Um, I would argue it's too good, which yeah. that's the other side, is it, it gets very challenging to do penance when you walk in and you're like, Oh, that looks so good. You know, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. not going to eat this meal today. And then you walk in and it's like chicken fried steak and mashed potatoes. Oh, and gravy. nice. And you're like, nice. What? Yeah. Right in, the, right in the middle of Lent, right? To do that penance. So there you go. So that's a reverse uh, sort of penance. Um, you know, maybe I shouldn't have had those grilled cheese sandwiches. Yes, plural. I had more than one. Okay. Uh, don't judge me. Uh, moving on. Uh, so let's see another another good story. You have you have one. It's, I said one. Now I want to let you share so one. So it's as funny well. that you I you just triggered this. So I'm going to go with the Holy Spirit here. You said that you had more than one. So there was a Lent in college where a bunch of my friends and I decided that we were going to eat just bread on Friday. Mm. But that's all we said, and so things got very dicey. I mean. We would buy like giant loaves of French bread and people were trying different ones on Friday. Mm. And then we would just continuously eat all day on Friday. Nice. And then, then there was a big debate on butter. And it just, it got really absurd because think about when you're really hungry and you go to a nice restaurant. Right. The bread is so good. That yes. was kind of like all day Friday. So it didn't end up really oh, being yeah. that much of a penance. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, a, I'm yeah. at Papa Do's just... Eating the bread, oh, waiting yeah. for see the that, meal. See, and that reminds me of a of a of a Lenten story at Papa Do's. So, uh, so my birthday is March seventh, uh, by the way, and so it always happens during Lent. Always during Lent, and we have our our birthday. I have my birthday party during Lent, and I, now that I'm a priest, I I want to abuse my power as a pastor to actually commute penances to another day. I don't know if that's the right word, but we can transfer penances or obligations on Sunday in special circumstances. So I'm thinking, you know, I, I have my family around me and they're saying, you know, we, you know, we want to continue with our Lenten, uh, Lenten exercises. I gave up this, I gave up that. Or if it's a Friday, we can't eat any kind of, any kind of meat except fish, of course. Um, so, so at any rate, I, I'm, I'm tempted to just say, how can you fast while the bridegroom is here, you know? But that's that doesn't go over well. So anyway, so we went to uh, Papa Do's, Papa Do's, okay, on a Friday because March seventh fell on a Friday. I want you to imagine that, saying that we're gonna maintain our Lenten penance, which is it's meant to be a self denial, by going to Papa Do's, okay, where they had you talking about bread. Their bread is unbelievable. Their garlic bread. And then they've got that that butter that you that just it's just a creamy butter, and then they've got the you know the crawfish platter. You can order a fish with scallops on top and crawfish and crab meat and all kinds of cream and all kinds of different kinds of rice or whatever. Um, am I helping with the fasting? By the way, you're oh, not helping. Not helping, huh? Oh well, well I, I'm trying to help you with your penance, no. make you suffer more. It, it's yeah. working. Okay, it good. Is, it's working. Good. It's funny. I was talking to somebody recently and I joked on Ash Wednesday. I said, I said, hey, we're going to Perry's if you want to come. And the response says, oh, they have great seafood. Uh, I'm like, there no, it is. no, we're not going to Perry's going on to Ash Paris. Wednesday. That's right. I love it. Yeah, um, th that's an example of losing the spirit or the intention of why we're doing the thing. So anyway, but that's easy to do. Um, yeah, no, it is. It's and that's the challenge I got. So are we still going here? We got more. I, I mean, more. you got one more. Let's go. Let's go after. Let's so, get after it, man. 
talk about losing the spirit. So when I was in college, I don't even think this was fasting. I think it was just abstinence days. We would just, we just loved meat. It was so hard for us to give up that meal with meat in it. And we would, without a doubt, wait until midnight and then we would go to McDonald's and we would just stock up. I mean, we would order so much food and like McDoubles, which how much, how much meat is really in a McDouble? I don't even know. Well, I, it's how, so how low much, grade. How much meat is in any kind of McDonald's burger? I think, I think you can have a Big Mac on, you know, when you're yeah, fasting from, yeah. when you're abstaining from meat. I mean, I don't think it's real meat. <laughs> that's not official, by the way. That's my, Saint that's Bart's my, that's, that's a gospel according <laughs> to the Father Christopher Plant. Um, yeah, that's my rule. Yeah, and I'm I just remember, kidding. I don't go to McDonald's. I remember we would go to McDonald's at midnight and we'd probably eat there for 30 minutes. And then we would go to one of the houses, one of the Catholic households, and we would play Super Smash Brothers on N64, which I'm not that old for that game to be relevant then. It was not relevant. I think, hmm. like, the, I mean, there were crazy xboxes but we just love to play that game it was almost wow. like playing like a board game you know you're playing wow. you got the n64 controllers everybody has like their yeah. own that they preserve you're, you're making me feel old by the way because i'm i'm old enough to remember um how how cool it was to have a the first nintendo entertainment system the 8-bit system so i'm sorry go ahead which i grew up yeah with kind of the super nintendo right when i started playing games uh, and then yeah. the n64 came out so all the way in college, I mean, that, yeah. that thing's dead at that point. I mean, people are playing Call of Duty and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so we would play Super Smash Brothers on Nintendo 64, and I just remember that we would stay up so late playing. It was like 4 in the morning. Like, okay, what whatever benefit that God wants for us mm. out of giving abstinence on Friday, I mean, I think you just completely destroy that benefit when you stay up until 4 in the morning playing I mean, video games well i i hate super smash brothers especially when i pr played against my brother because he would just absolutely destroy me every single time and this is my younger brother six years younger than me right so my penance would have been let me play against my brother in super smash brothers that's what it would have been yeah we got it's embarrassing to say how good we got i mean it's embarrassing yeah, I was. I could have. You should be ashamed of yourself. Professional tournaments at yeah. that point. Yeah, yeah. You should. You should uh, hang your head in shame. That's why you need to fast more. I think. More. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah. So you know, all these, all these crazy uh, different kinds of penances, different kinds of ways that we would abstain. Sometimes I would even joke around and I would say, "I'm going to give up smoking cigarettes for Lent," and I don't, I don't smoke cigarettes, you know. But I'm not going to start. So. There's, there's my penance. I will not start smoking during Lent. So I really wanted to work this into my reflection today, but I just couldn't make it work. I wanted to tell people about how at the seminary during Lent, I refer to my bed as my second desk, which isn't true. I Like nice. I said, I'm not able to nice. give up sleeping, but it's just funny to yeah. tell people like, yeah, no, feel free to sit on my second desk. Yeah, my during Lent, my second desk. Very nice. Here. Yeah. Now, yeah, you were talking about the, the, the bed not going to, uh, you know, uh, giving up sleeping on the bed for two hours. I could, I could actually give up sleeping on the bed for, for two hours every night by just not by just going to bed later. I mean, think of that, you know. So if your normal bedtime is, is 10 o'clock, you can just give up sleeping <laughs> on your bed till midnight and do other things. That's good. I can, I can do that, you being can. a night owl. You can. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Which him being a night owl can be very clutch. Yes. You had a nice sick call the other day. Yes, but. yes, that's true. I actually could not fall asleep. And I think this is God at work. And, and sometimes I just have, you know, sleepless nights for whatever reason. And uh, and then for some reason, I decided to look at my phone and check my work email, my ministry email. And, you know, it was like uh, 1, 1 40 or 2 a.m. or something. And there was a sick call that came in, an emergency call. Because we get it instantly through the through the email system, and also a phone call goes over to our religious sisters, and then the second person I think was supposed to be Father Ricardo, uh, but I don't I'm not sure what happened, but the the, the wires got scrambled and it, the calls didn't get to anybody, but I just happened so happened to, to see this email that came in 30 minutes afterwards, and then that's when I said, hey, I'm gonna go go take care of this call, so. You know, there you go. And with incredible pastoral charity, he did not wake me up. I decided not to wake you up um, because, you know, every time I wake you up, you know, you complain, you drag <laughs> your feet, you know, and, and you look like a slob and, and, you know, you don't wear the cassock, you wear your T-shirt. 
<laughs> I'm just totally kidding. This guy gets on it. He is. He hustles. I remember I woke him up in the middle of the night because, you know, it's part of the training, right? It was another middle of the night call. I said, we're heading out. And he said, okay, and put on his cassock, and he was ready to go. And that was it. And, uh, in fact, you drove, right? I, I don't think I put drive. on my cassock that time. What did you put on? I think that's my rule that I don't put on my cassock. I just don't necessarily take it off. Oh. Ah, oh, that's what it is. Hello, St. Mary's Seminary. <laughs> or you could say, I don my cassock. I don't put I on don. Oh, my fair, cassock. I, fair. Yeah. Yeah, I think that night I just went with the black di archdiocesan polo. That's what it was. Over. That's what it was, making sure that there's a, a T-shirt that sticks out, white T-shirt, so they can <laughs> they can continue to look like a priest. And so, yeah. So, And, and he's saying, hello, St. Mary's, because there's, you know, there's limitations <laughs> on when and where you can wear the cassock and... Um, you know, I'm thinking. I'm thinking if it's good enough in Rome for seminarians to wear cassocks, it's good enough for our seminarians here at St. Bartholomew. So, and, and we've yeah. had some times where, I mean, me changing out of my cassock could have been the reason that someone didn't get the sacraments it, before sure. they died. I mean, I'm not willing to take that risk to, of not getting the sacraments. Are you, oh, I I hear what you're saying. Okay, hello, St. Mary's. I'm not responsible for what he just said. <laughs> so anyway. Well, this was a, this was a good conversation. Um, you know, I, I hope that all of you enjoyed uh, listening to us banter about uh, bad penances or funny penance stories in, during Lent. Uh, so feel free, please, uh, to like and subscribe and hit the alarm bell. So hit the thumbs up. Okay, so here's what you need to do. If you're watching this on YouTube, this is so complicated. It's unbelievably ridiculous. When you are on the YouTube video right now, if you are on the if you're on the YouTube. What you want to do is you want to hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. You want to hit the like button, that thumbs up button below the video that helps with the video. And then you want to hit the alarm bell because even though you're subscribed, you won't get notified unless you hit the alarm bell. If you're watching this on Facebook, because we're also publishing this on Facebook, what you want to do is you want to follow the page. It's either the St. Bartholomew page or it's my own fan page. There's two of them. Uh, hit the follow button, hit the like. Uh, for the page and then also hit the thumbs up button below the video and that will really help us out to get the message out and uh, please let us know if there's any topics that you would like for us to discuss and while we're at it feel free to comment on the on this video on YouTube or Facebook and let us know uh, what have been some silly penances for you some interesting penance stories and then maybe we can get a conversation going in that way so what do you think about that sounds like a plan great well, thank you again for, for joining us here at, at Conversing Clergy. We hope that you enjoyed our conversation. Uh, let's continue to pray for each other. Once again, I'm Father Christopher Plant, pastor of St. Bartholomew, here with Christopher Meyer, who is our pastoral year seminarian uh, here at St. Bart's. Uh, God's blessings to all of you. Here I am at your door. Would you let me? It sounds so good with the headphones on. I like my voice more through the headphones than to do in real life. It sounds really good.